figured I'd uh, put a little bit of a voiceover for this one. So, when you heat treat engravers, so I've read, you have to heat treat them mostly shaped. I've, uh, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this, but um, it's got a obtuse bevel on the bottom, a 60 degree bevel on the nose, and that's to aid in making the uh, making the cut the chip pull out of the metal. So I'm just going to use this 1,000 grit Japanese waterstone to just polish up those bottom bevels. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean. It just has to be moderately in shape. And I'll keep doing that until I've got it all polished up. And I've also got to polish the top. I've also got to polish that 60 grit, uh, that 60 degree bevel. Find the bevel and just like a pencil, scrubbing back and forth. It's a good opportunity to use the edges of your water stones, seeing as they wear out pretty fast. Now there are jigs and the like that can do this for you but uh, I prefer to do a lot of the stuff that I do freehand as it trains me to uh, perfect my craft yeah, so that's a nice thousand grit finish there and now I'll just continue polishing those sides and then I'll swap out to the 6000 grit. Now, uh, two things I need to cover. One is the reason I made two is because I made one with a very fine point to test how fine it needs to be. Um, very acute angle. I think this is probably uh, just under 90 degrees, so probably uh, 80 or 70. And uh, a slightly more uh, obtusely angled. Um, Graver, this is probably 90 degrees, uh, much thicker, which I believe will stand up to the abuse. Now, with the polishing, you don't need to go hard out and you know get a perfect polish all the way up because the only cutting surface is, is right at the very tip here. So, as long as this face is polished and as long as the edges at close to that area are polished, you're fine. You don't want to lift up too high because then you'll start creating a secondary bevel this way. So when I polish, I put the graver flat to the stone and normally do push strokes on the flats. And this gives me a nice flat polish area. And the same on the other side. It doesn't require a lot at the 6000 grit. These uh, water stones are quite aggressive. But um, although I didn't show it in the video, and uh, it doesn't seem like it. I did actually temper these very, very slightly. They have to be harder than the metal they're going to cut. So, given that I may use these on knife blades in the future, even annealed high carbon steel tends to be quite hard. So I'm, uh, I've decided to keep a very, very, very light temper on these. This is forged from a file, and this is forged from a piece of leaf spring. And um, I'm going to see how they hold up under the pressures of, of engraving. But now that I've got my two gravers ready to go, I'm going to polish the face on this one and then we'll be ready to uh, try some engraving. So, now I've got a piece of test metal uh, set up in the vise. Um, I should preface this and say that I have never done engraving before, so I have no idea what I'm doing. But um, as of making this video, I have sixty-four subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. You guys are incredible. Uh, anyone who's watching in the future who has subscribed, thank you very much. It really is appreciated. I. I Love the fact that I can reach so many people, um, and you know I look forward to, to having more people to share this experience with. 
uh, share the learning experience. Now you may recognize the uh, engraving hammer that I made early, earlier in the week. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, um, there will be a link in the description to, uh, to that video. Um, but I forged this out of an old piece of axle, and this is a Shio candle. And uh, now we're just going to give this a shot, see if I can uh, see if I can make this cut. Well, it definitely cuts. This is the uh, the larger graver. It's breaking out nice chips. It's a very deep, deep mark. I think I need to adjust the angle of the bevel a little bit because this is uh, wanting to dive into the cut rather than rather than uh, chase the way I want it to. Like I said, I've never really engraved before, so this is all a learning experience for me. Yeah, so I think I think when I'm sharpening the next one, I'm definitely going to have to adjust. I may actually have to adjust this graver to be better suited to this kind of work. And I can feel it getting blunt as I uh, as I use now it. I'm going to try the uh, more acutely angled graver. See how we do. When I get old and losing my head Many years from now Will you still be sending me a valentine Birthday greeting bottle of wine If I stay out till quarter to three Would you lock the door? Will you still need me? Will you still feed me? When I'm 64 you can thank Jake Mantle for uh, inspiring me to sing along to my 64 subscriber video. So there it is, after just the light sanding over the top, it seems to have worked rather well. I mean, <laughs> you'll have to forgive my uh, terrible engraving skills. And just as a follow-up, um, I know there's probably going to be a couple of comments from people who actually know what they're doing about an engraving, um, but I was definitely taking way too deep a cut uh, with the gravers, uh, getting very, very deep into the cut, uh, which was putting undue strain on the cutters. Um, so I resharpened both gravers, and now I'm taking much lighter cuts and having far better results.
Hi guys, thanks for watching the video. It's been pretty hot today, so unfortunately I didn't have as much time as I'd like. Because I think I'd die if I stayed out here any longer. Uh, obviously I've got a lot to learn, but uh, I'm happy to be making progress at least. And I'm glad you guys could join me. If you haven't or subscribed already, it'd be really appreciated if you did. You could always follow me along as well on Instagram and Facebook, at SamTownsBladesmith. I'll be uploading weekly, hopefully twice weekly, but there's no guarantees on that for the next for the coming weeks. And uh, I upload back behind the scenes stuff on Instagram and Facebook, and updates as to what I'm up to outside of the YouTube uh, channel. So yeah, I really appreciate everyone who's subscribed so far and everyone who's commented and liked. And uh, I look forward to sharing more of my experiences and my journey with you guys. Anyway, hope you all have a great week. I'll see you then.